Welcome everyone. I'm Bernard Fallon, Managing Director of Industry Research, Investor Outreach and Education for Bio, joined by my colleague, uh, Mackenzie Vernetti. Hello everyone. My name is Mackenzie Vernetti um, and I am Director of Partnering Operations at Bio. It's a pleasure being here with you today. We are thrilled to sort of use today to kick off uh, an exploration of the 2022 Bio International Convention. Part of what makes this possible is the support of bio sponsors. These are just a, a, a short list of some of our major double helix and helix level sponsors who help make the convention possible and everything we'll be talking about today. So let's go to today's agenda. You know, we believe we have some new people with us on uh, today's conversation. So we'll cover who is bio, we'll review the convention overall, but then spend the bulk of our time diving deep into the partnering system. We know that that is a key area of interest and a key part of what makes the Bio International Convention so special, uh, making sure that we are leaving time for your questions after a demo of the system itself. So who is Bio? Well, I am Bio, uh, Mackenzie is Bio, you are Bio, Bio uh, is all of us working to uh, advance the, you know, the science and the applications for biotechnology. To make it a little more specific, Bio is also the world's largest advocacy organization, association and trade association, representing member companies across the United States and more than 30 countries around the world, roughly a thousand different organizations. We focus particularly in the health biotechnology space, the agriculture and environment emerging space, and the emerging biotechnology companies, which are those companies who are still figuring out, who are pioneering new applications, and who are you know, focused on raising capital and growth. What is bio doing? Bio is working to drive a bio revolution through education, collaboration, and advocacy. We are your voice with the FDA, with the Department of Agriculture, with Congress, with the WHO, with organizations around the world. Uh, why? Because we want to cure patients, go back, uh, protect our climate and nourish humanity. Because we believe that the work of all of you know, this audience, that what you're working to do is going to uh, lead to better health, sustainability, and ideally justice you know, for, for people around the world. Where does the convention play in? Let's talk about that. So the next slide. Bio International Convention, you see on the right, you know, we're looking to put some ideas in people's heads and take ideas and share them. You know, that's, you might say, uh, an image of the brain with all of the different tracks that we're going to be focusing on at the convention. Go to the next slide. The theme this year is Limitless Together. You know, we've all uh, been through uh, uh, probably too many virtual conferences uh, than we can count when we want it to be together. Well, in San Diego, we believe that we can be together safely, productively. The theme this year is Limitless Together. We're going to be in June 13th through 16th for the main days of the convention in San Diego Convention Center in California. What are we going to experience? Four days of networking, programming, and partnering that we'll detail in our, uh, today's conversation. Because Big breakthroughs happen when collaboration and innovation collide. Uh, we've seen examples of an investor meeting an entrepreneur that turn into further conversations, that turn into investment, that turn into new medicines. And that's, what, uh, that's why we do what we do. Uh, to give a little more context to what to experience in San Diego, next slide, sort of a high level overview of some of the highlights. Uh, the partnering, which we'll be talking about, a lot of that occurs in the Bio Business Forum. It also occurs across the exhibit floor. Uh, but the event will include a large exhibit floor with partnering. It'll include a main stage for keynotes. Past keynotes have included, you know, Richard Branson, have included in our virtual world, you know, uh, Dr. Albert Borla and Dr. Jennifer Doudna. Uh, 
we are going to be announcing this year's exciting keynote soon. So stay tuned, not today, but what we can talk about today are the exciting uh, speakers and the engaging and interactive program. We'll have more than a hundred different sessions. We'll be featuring awards at both ends of the, the spectrum, both some bio genius, uh, early uh, students who've made advances in science and our bio heritage award, which is for someone who's had the entire career developing new technologies. Other features that occur across the event are startup stadium, for getting entrepreneurs uh, a spotlight to interact with those early stage investors. Our academic campus to help our tech transfer officers connect with the industry and get ideas into application. Our patient advocacy pavilion so that members of industry are hearing from the patient advocacy groups themselves about you know, their needs, their developments, their uh, readiness to collaborate on scientific research. As I said, we're excited about this being in person and part of being in person is that face-to-face -face interaction. We'll have hospitality receptions, welcome receptions, uh, parties at key uh, uh, locations across San Diego for you to meet old friends and make new friends. A 5K run on Monday, lots of excitement that we're planning. How, this is a little data on when we were last together and how this truly is a global event spanning exhibitors, companies, international and uh, uh, governmental representatives. This is the world being limitless together, we believe again in 2022. This is a senior audience that you're gonna be uh, looking to meet with and partnering with a senior audience from across all sectors of the biotechnology ecosystem and of companies from every stage of development already making an impact globally to those who are just starting out with their first few employees, but with an idea. The framework of what we'll provide, as I suggested, anchored by partnering, high-powered bio one-on-one -on -one partnering, a robust exhibition floor for you to uh, connect with and plan out your interactions with groups from you know, more than 50 different uh, pavilions, which are different geographies, as well as hundreds of uh, corporate exhibitors. Four days of more than 100 educational sessions and you know, the early, the middle, the end of each day, networking, receptions to uh, allow serendipity to take effect and to recharge your batteries. Another level of detail, we have you know, sort of uh, multiple levels of event access that we'll detail, but what is possible across this whole span is described here. Those main stage keynotes will happen on the Tuesday and Wednesday, June 14th and 15th. Four days of access to our exhibit floor and pavilions, to our bio one-on-one -on -one partnering, to our educational sessions, to those networking receptions. And uh, for those who uh, are looking to develop, BIO will also have pre-convention professional development courses so that you can uh, join us in San Diego a little earlier and uh, work for issues on your team where you may want to uh, improve some skills that be applicable to your partnering experience. The next slide sort of details seven of the courses that will be uh, that we're offering. Some of these are one day, some of these are three day. Uh, that uh, focusing on business development and licensing skills, raising capital, negotiations. Sort of if you are new to biotech uh, itself, biotech briefing for the non scientist. All detailed at bio.org/courses. Way to make the most of your week. What will it look like? Here's an overview of the San Diego Convention Center. The upper level will be where the educational program, our startup stadium, some of the awards, our wellness stations will be. The ground level includes our exhibition zone, our bio business forum, company presentations, the academic campus of tech transfer groups, bioprocess zone, and the contract services zone for those in the 
manufacturing side of their development. Excited about the breadth of the programming that we offer. This is truly a, a global audience of experts ready for you to learn from and interact with, uh, covering all aspects of biotechnology. The format of the next uh, I mentioned, there's some key uh, two days of main stage keynotes in the mornings every day of the convention. There will be super sessions in the midday to hear from global spanning organizations such as these listed here. A mixture of fireside chats, one-on-ones with notable industry decision makers, often including government regulators as well. And then more than 100 breakout panels where you can connect with your part of the, or the biotechnology industry around the issues most important to you. Some of these are laid out on this slide covering, you know, the vast span of this exciting industry. You can see a little more, and as you plan out your time, if you go to bio.org slash convention, and then the schedule program part of the menu, you can filter all of these hundreds of sessions to just those that are most relevant to you by topic area, by company presentation, or by speakers to see a list of who are we speaking, who will we hear from and on what topics so that you can make the most of your four days as you're also planning to partner. This is all, this is a list of some of the more recent uh, featured speakers that you can see listed on the bio.org slash convention site. Startup Stadium, I mentioned, this is a, a pitch contest that we hold so that these early stage entrepreneurs get a chance to get investor feedback and get exposed to the, the breadth of what biotechnology can do. Applications are still being accepted for this until April 15th. So if you yourself or there are companies you work with that have you know, raised less than $10 million so far and are working to uh, uh, seek partners, seek investment, please visit bio.org slash convention and the startup stadium option. The academic campus, here are a few of the uh, academic and research organizations eager to talk about their technology available for licensing through our partnering system. If you are such an organization, uh, we make sort of special services available to you to be part of our academic campus. Please visit that for free application on the bio.org slash convention so you could understand what we can offer for you to uh, be able to uh, fully register and participate in the academic campus. The exhibitors, I mentioned the exhibition floor, who might you meet on that exhibition floor? Here's just a short sampling of the, uh, the vast array, as I said, a, a truly a global reach for this audience that each of those international pavilions will have within it multiple early stage, mid-stage companies from those geographies eager to talk with you and uh, seek partnering opportunities with you. Networking receptions, some photos of the type of examples of the events that we do, both small and large, uh, activity-oriented races to uh, exhibitor booth uh, receptions to our large party on the midway and aircraft carrier, uh, on the uh, on the ocean there in San Diego. Company presentations are one of the ways that you get to hear from company leaders themselves as they pitch what exactly they've been working on, what they're trying to achieve, and what they are seeking in terms of partnering. We uh, are still accepting applications for that uh, the, through May. So please do look at the, the bio website if you'd like to be one of those presenting companies. And uh, starting in May, we'll be listing all of those uh, presenters themselves for you to plan uh, partnering meetings with them. You know, we typically have you know, nearly 200 such company presentations, again, covering the vast span of the innovations going on in our industry. I mentioned different levels of access. This is uh, a snapshot of the access levels, if you're not already registered, there's still time to register. Uh, bio members receive a, a discount. The premier access gives you access to everything I've talked about so far and the 
the fullest level of partnering access. General access on its own uh, includes access to the educational sessions, the exhibition floor, the company presentations, the receptions, but not partnering. So that's the main distinction. And then exhibition access is the exhibition floor and the exhibition receptions with partnering as a, a special add-on. Similarly, company presentation, if you want that extra opportunity to tell your own story yourself you know, in front of a podium on the exhibition floor, that is an add-on with a, uh, a simple application process all detailed on the bio website. I said, we're excited to be back in person. Of course, we wanna be back in person safely. And so bio is watching carefully the local, state, national guidance on how people should be gathering again safely. And we detail our health and safety protocols on our website, and we'll be updating that as we you know, get closer or learn any new information before June. But do know that uh, everyone to attend will be required to show proof of vaccination and proof of a negative COVID-19 test to enter the event, because again, it is key for this to be a, a safe, productive event for everyone. I takes that very uh, sincerely. So as we move into our partnering section, I do ask that you think again of any questions. We'll work on those uh, through the Q&A function of Zoom and uh, leave time for a block of those at the end of this next section. But uh, thank you all, we're excited. And now to take us into a deep dive on partnering, uh, Mackenzie, if you'd please uh, begin. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie, for that great overview. Um, all right, so I'll take us on through our partnering portion of the webinar today. So what is partnering? Partnering is 30 minute B2B meetings that happen over three and a half days at the Bio International Convention. These meetings are prearranged using the Bio one-on-one -on -one partnering system and take place in person on site at the San Diego Convention Center in both the business forum and the exhibition floor. Meetings for Bio 2022 will only be taking place in person, not virtually. There is no hybrid option for these meetings. So in a nutshell, you register, get access to the system, send and accept meeting requests with companies of interest, and then Bio does the rest of the work. We schedule the meetings for you, taking into account the mutual availability of the meeting participants. And we then assign a date, time, and location and you get your meeting schedule and arrive in San Diego with a plan. Now, it's important that I point out that there are two types of partnering at the Bio International Convention. The difference being when, there, when and where specifically your meetings are scheduled. So regardless of in which type of partnering you are participating, it's the same system. So you're meeting with the same companies and the same contacts. So business forum partnering is included in the premier access registration and those meetings take place largely in the business forum. And in some cases in an exhibit booth or pavilion, if you happen to meeting, if you happen to be meeting with an exhibitor or pavilion company. The business forum meeting space consists of hundreds and hundreds of meeting booths and people are bustling in and out every 25 to 30 minutes. Exhibitor booth partnering is available to exhibitors and pavilions only. Exhibitors and pavilions can purchase access to partnering and have their meetings scheduled in their exhibit booth or pavilion exclusively. And this is a great value add if you're an exhibitor as it allows you to hold your meetings in your branded space. So here's a schedule of the partnering meeting hours and there's a slight difference between the two. Exhibitor booth partnering hours mirror the opening hours of the exhibit hall. And something new this year is that exhibitor booth partnering hours have been extended to include Monday afternoon as well. So if you're participating in exhibitor booth partnering, make sure to take advantage of that extra time. And I am pleased to announce that the Bio 101 partnering system is open for this year's convention. So you can register today and receive access within one to two business days and hit the ground running on your partnering outreach. And with that, we'll go into some tips and best practices. There are five core steps to partnering. The first is to create and update your company profile. And I stress update because if you've attended a bioconference before, we automatically import your most recent company profile for you. So you don't have to start from scratch. 
Some of that information can get out of date from year to year though, so make sure to review it and make the necessary updates. The second is to select your availability for meetings. Your partnering calendar is unavailable by default, and you'll need to open at least one time slot in order to be able to send or accept requests. I recommend opening time slots in a reasonable manner to reflect your practical availability. For example, if you know you're going to hit the Tuesday night reception really hard, as I know we all probably are planning to do, I highly recommend you leave your 7 and 7.30 a.m. time slots on Wednesday as unavailable to allow yourself some extra time to recover. The third, search for potential partners and send tailored requests. BIOS Partnering System has a powerful advanced search to really help you narrow down candidates and increase the quality of your meetings. Once you've found a potential partner, make sure you send them a personalized request so that they understand the benefits and opportunities of partnering with you. Fourth, manage your message center actively and often. New companies registers, register daily and so may have your next great partner. Fifth, and this is kind of a freebie, bioschedules your accepted meetings. So you don't have to worry about schedules, availability, locations, and all of that. Our scheduling algorithm optimizes mutual availability and walk times, so you get more meetings and have less travel time and distance between those meetings. Now for some best practices. Prepare your profile, adding as much information as possible to help other companies find you. The more text and keywords you use, the more searchable and visible your company. It's just like Google. Start requesting meetings early. Don't wait until just a few weeks out to start your outreach. Companies that start sending requests early typically have more meetings. Make the subject line of your meeting request count. The subject line here can work with or against you. Make sure it's topical and something that encourages the recipient to review your request and not something generic like meeting request that may be ignored. Target your meeting request to the recipient by providing specific benefits of partnering with you and follow up as necessary. If it's getting close to bio 2022 and you haven't gotten a response, use the reply only button on the meeting request to follow up. And as I said before, the subject line of your meeting request really counts. Using meeting request as a subject line here is a lot like using email as a subject of an email. Instead, use this as an opportunity to stand out and show the other company that you've done your research. Meeting requests with more targeted subject lines have a higher response rate. Mention something specific, an asset, person, or therapeutic area that the company works in. Now let's look at a partnering case study to help you demonstrate the, import the importance of those best practices. So by sending more requests, sending them early, using unique subject lines and messages, Private Biotech One and Public Biotech One in this example, had five and seven times the meetings as their counterparts that started later, sent less requests, and used generic or non-tailored subject lines and messages. Now let's take a quick look at the partnering system in action, and I'll highlight some of the most important features to help get you started. If you want a closer look at some of the truly powerful tools um, that the system has to offer, make sure to register and attend the advanced partnering webinar with me on May 11th. All right, so like I was saying about the homepage, when you log in, um, you'll always have access to this toolbar up here, which will give you quick access to the main parts of the account. So you have your profile, search, calendar, and message center. Um, this button you can use to send a quick new request can also access your bookmarks and use this icon here to update your notifications preferences as well as your personal profile. Along the left hand side you have a quick snapshot of what's going on with your company, all of the meeting requests, as well as any other partnering participants from your company along the left hand side here. In the middle we have general convention information such as our Helix and Double Helix sponsors, bio business solutions, information and offers, our marketing toolkit, and then more information about our health and safety protocols. 
Along the right-hand side, we have some useful information about scheduling. We'll add links to our webinars here. We have tutorials as well as customer service information. So when you log in for the first time, um, I would suggest definitely checking out your profile to start. Your company profile is uh, your first impression to others in the system. So don't just take two minutes and throw in some marketing copy. Um, think about your goals for the conference and what information you can include about your company to help you reach those goals. Everything you include in your profile is searchable, so make sure to include as much information, but also accurate information. Remember that bio imports your most recently used company profile, so make sure to review and update this information, especially assets. Um, companies often forget to update their listed assets, especially asset phase, if that has changed since their last bio partnering conference. And then a note about searchability. Let's say a company is looking for a biotech located in the United States that's working in oncology, and that's you. Well, if you neglect to mention oncology somewhere in your profile or add a therapeutic area or forget to mark your company type or even neglect to include the United States as your country, you're not in that company's search results and you might not get that meeting. So with that, I'll take a moment to go over some of the profile fields here. Along the left-hand side, there's company type, keywords that make you very searchable, Brief description is useful because you can add in one to two lines about your company that display right under your company name in the search results. Description, you can add news about your company, company objectives for this conference, information about licensing. Um, you'll want to add in some therapeutic areas um, and these trees go down pretty, um, pretty detailed. So I would recommend you know, selecting the ones that are most applicable to you. Um, financial information, contact information for your company, and then in the middle here we have um, a kind of mini profiles that you can add in for drug assets, services, and market products, depending on what is applicable to your company. Along the right-hand side, you can add in information about your high-level management, um, and then we have information um, for your um, for yourself as well as your colleagues that are in partnering, you can update your notification preferences and delegate profiles here. And then at the bottom, I want to draw attention to the content section. Um, you can add this content um, to media requests as well as asset services and market products to so draw specific attention to them. So feel free to add, you know, PowerPoints, um, one pagers, you can even embed a video from YouTube um, and you can add those documents to specific meeting requests. So once you've gone in, viewed and updated your company profile, um, definitely head to the calendar where you'll mark availability for meetings as well as view your meeting schedule. The calendar does display in the conference time zone, which is Pacific Daylight Time for San Diego, California. Note that your calendar is marked as unavailable by default because we need you to, to tell us when you're available to take meetings. To open up availability, um, you can either select individual time slots or use the change availability button to update the entire day. Just remember to hit save. Make sure to reference the program along the right-hand side of your screen to add sessions directly to your partnering calendar and manage your meeting availability around them if they are high-priority sessions. You can view the tracks and corresponding sessions through this drop-down menu here. Um, and when you add a session to your calendar, the system will ask you if you want to keep that time slot available or not available for partnering meetings and then it will mark your availability accordingly. One thing to note about sessions is that we're adding them almost on a daily basis as they're confirmed. So keep checking back um, as we get closer to um, Bio 2022 for more of that information. And remember that there are three and a half days of partnering. So make sure to open up availability across all conference days and you can return to your calendar at any time to update your availability. So make sure to keep that current. 
So you can see that my calendar on Tuesday has a few different things going on. Meetings are displayed in dark blue. Um, program and sessions are in light blue and yellow are personal events. If you're taking any offsite meetings or meeting up with a friend for lunch, use a personal event to mark that on your calendar. You can do that with this button here for new personal event. One very useful thing I do wanna point out is that we've gone ahead and estimated um, the walk times between the various meeting locations. So if you have back-to-back -back meetings, this information will display for you so you can stay on time and punctual for your next meeting. I also wanna mention that you can export your partnering schedule from this page in a variety of formats. You can do your individual calendar, your company calendar, and a static calendar file to um, add to your Outlook or Google Calendar. But I do want to say that, you know, one of my favorite features of the system is that your meetings will be sent to your Outlook calendar automatically. So make sure to accept those invites as they come in to keep your Outlook calendar updated. And then once you've updated your availability for meetings, it's time to start requesting some. So we will go head on over to the search page. So here is where you can apply both basic and advanced searches, as well as view the entire list of companies and delegates and the like. So across the top here, there are five tabs. We have companies, delegates, assets, market products, and services that as default give you kind of the full list of everything that's going on all at once. You can export these lists or your search results by clicking the export link here. So for example, if you wanted a full list of all of the companies uh, registered to participate in partnering at any given time, just head on over to the partnering system, go to the search page, let the, let the list load and then click export and that'll give it to you um, in an Excel file, which is very handy to have around. Um, use the search bar at the top to apply both. Uh, you can apply a basic text-based search um, and you can even use quotes and operators like and and or to further customize your results. We also have an investor um, toggle here so you can filter the entire, um, the entire list by investors only as well. Use the advanced search, which is often overlooked, I'm sad to say, um, to narrow down on specific fields like company type, location, ownership, therapeutic areas, um, and more. You can even isolate, and this is my favorite filter, new companies that have been added since your last search with, the reg with this registration date filter. So you can isolate companies that have been added to the system since yesterday or the last two days, or even apply specific dates if you remember the last time you logged in. Just this helps people isolate the companies that have been newly added. Um, you can also apply search criteria across the tabs. So let's do an example of that. Um, so let's say that I want to search for a biotech company that is based in, let's say, Canada or the United States. And I want them to have an asset that is, let's do phase, do preclinical pre phase. Click search now, and that will give you a list of 96 companies currently. So if you came back tomorrow and wanted to see if there were any new companies that were added um, that fit the search criteria, you can also add that registration filter on top. It's very handy. Um, when you find a candidate, you can click on the result to view their profile. You can click expand to make this full screen. You can use the request meeting button to send a quick new meeting request. Um, make a note that's only visible to your company, um, as well as um, add bookmarks and print out the company profile. Okay. And then once you've sent a meeting request, you'll want to manage all of that over in your message center. Um, this is where all of your company's outgoing and incoming meeting requests will be. This is a lot like your email inbox, but it's shared among your entire company with any of your colleagues that are also registered for partnering. 
Um, there are filters along the left-hand side here that let you zone in on requests based on directionality and status. So for example, if you, you, know, you logged in one day and you only wanna see the media requests that you've received um, that your company hasn't responded to yet, you would filter for incoming requests and requested status to get just those media requests. Um, similarly to Outlook, you can click on a meeting request to open it um, here more to be able to manage it on the right hand side. Um, you can apply tags at the top. You can tag specific delegates to their attention or add in um, specific tags like Oncology or Corp Dev, um, whatever works for your team. They're entirely customizable. Um, for incoming media requests like this one, uh, click, click either the accept or decline button to respond. When you hit accept, you'll be able to include a brief message here um, and update any participants from your company. You can also add a linked resource from your company profile, like an asset or a one pager that you may have added to your content section. Um, and then um, updating the participants at the bottom. At the bottom, the participant will always default to you. So if you would like a colleague's calendar to also be considered when the meeting is scheduled and you want them to attend the meeting with you, make sure you add them here um, to the request as well as a participant. Once you reviewed these details, click accept request at the bottom. It will change it into accepted status. Um, and the next thing will be for bio to schedule the meeting. Um, and meeting scheduling will start in late May, but do not wait for scheduling to begin to start accepting and requesting meetings. Calendars do tend to fill up quickly after the first few rounds of scheduling. So make sure to get the bulk of your meetings confirmed early. Um, similarly, when you um, decline a meeting request, you will also be given the option to, um, to give a reply, a reply text-based text message. Um, companies do like responses, even if they're declines, because it helps them gauge um, their, their outreach and how they want to keep going um, and, and what their strategy is. So please do um, decline meetings if you are not planning to take the meeting, leaving them as requested. Um, it would be nice if you could decline. Um, let's see, there is a reply only button on meeting requests um, in two different spots. Uh, this is often used to send the other company a message, usually to ask the company for more information or a specific question about their request. Um, you can also use this to follow up on requests that you haven't yet heard back. Um, this is not um, an acceptance. So if you were to hit reply and say, yes, let's, let's have a meeting, that would be great. It's not actually accepted in the meeting and bio therefore won't know to schedule it. So if you want the meeting to be scheduled, please make sure that you're using the accept a request button to do so. And then should you want to send um, this company uh, or any company in your message center your direct contact information, you can do so by clicking on the share my contact information button. You usually fill out your contact information on your delegate profile in the partnering system. And that is, um, that is completely private to you. No one from other companies can see it um, unless you decide to share it specifically with each individual company. So you can do that here. Um, and at the bottom of meeting requests, we have the message thread. Um, it has all of kind of the, the updates and, and status changes and replies here for you to view all in one place. And then a few notes about the various statuses here in the message center. Um, accepted and scheduled meetings are going to appear in green. Um, an accepted meeting that cannot be scheduled due to lack of mutual availability though will be marked with a corresponding indicator like this one here. Um, this shows for both sides of the meeting, so the other company can see this as well in their message center. Um, if you see this on any of your accepted meetings, you should try to open up more availability on your calendar if you can. And should a mutually available time slot open up, that indicator will disappear and your meeting will be scheduled in the next round of meeting scheduling. To have a meeting rescheduled once we've started scheduling, which won't be until late May, um, click the request reschedule button. 
you can leave a, a reply if you'd like as well, and then click request reschedule. Um, it will put it into a pending reschedule status um, so that it can be rescheduled in the next round of scheduling. Um, similarly to accepted meetings, if you have a pending reschedule meeting that also doesn't have any other availability, um, it will also show with that indicator to help you a bit. Um, and remember that a meeting and requested status still needs to be either accepted or declined by the recipient and that the meeting itself can only be scheduled once it's been accepted. And then on that, uh, one final note that I do want to hammer home is that meetings will take place in person only on site at the Convention Center in San Diego from June 13th that afternoon through Thursday, June 16th. Meetings are not being scheduled virtually for BIO 2022. So I look forward to seeing everyone in San Diego and trading in my computer screen for some sunshine and good old fashioned face-to-face -face meetings. And with that, I will go back to the slides and we will open up for the Q&A session. And thank you very much, Mackenzie, for that detailed walkthrough of the, of the very powerful system. Uh, as you were talking, people did generate some questions, uh, picked a couple of the most popular, and I know you just said it, but it's worth saying again. So how do people participate in the partnering system via Zoom for San Diego? Yeah, so meetings will be scheduled only for in-person this year for BIO 2022. There is not a, a hybrid or virtual option. Meetings will be scheduled for in-person locations. You'll be given a specific meeting point, a specific meeting room, a specific booth um, to meet in. There will not be any Zoom links available. Excellent. Thank you. Therefore, one implication of that is anyone uh, who wants to attend that partnering meeting has to be with us in person in San Diego and registered for the convention. You can't have correct. a you can't have a colleague join via Zoom either. That, that is correct. Again, this is what we've heard from our community. You want to be together in person again, and that this is uh, the best way to make the most productive use of these days for high quality partnering meetings. Uh, I think there's a, a little bit of uh, confusion on the difference between an individual delegates or a calendar and partnering account and a company's. So if you're part of a group bigger than just yourself, what can you see? What will you be aware of other people's uh, invites? If you're part of, a, will you know if a colleague has already in invited someone else to a meeting? Absolutely. So when we looked at the message center, that's shared for your entire company. So anyone that is registered from your company with partnering access will be able to see all of the same incoming media requests. And this is because media requests are sent company to company to allow for the best collaboration. So within your team, you can decide to take all of the same meetings together or divide and conquer, which that speaks to the fact that you have your own individual calendar. So each person from your company, you're all registered for partnering, you're all listed under the same company, but you all have separate calendars so you can divide and conquer those meetings and manage your availability on an individual basis. Excellent, thank you. Now, sometimes I believe we'll have an organization that is one organization that is so big it really actually has some parts. If you're a group such as you know, the National Institutes of Health and might need more than one partnering account, you know, not one per person, but just more than one, is that possible and how would they ask for that? Um, yes, yeah, so to have separate profiles, you really need to be a separate um, uh, separate companies, um, but reach out to us at biopartnering at bio.org to flag that and we'll work with you. Um, the ability to have multiple company profiles in the partnering system is a benefit of sponsorship, um, but given um, different considerations on how your company is structured, we may be able to work with you. Thank you. Is there a limit to how many invites an organization can send out at one time? That's a great question. Um, so each company has a limit on 150 outstanding outgoing invites. 
So that means that when you log in on day one, you can send out 150 media requests immediately, but you can't send any more until you get at least one reply. So once, a meet, once one of those meetings that you've sent is either accepted, declined, or canceled, you can send a new media request, which is why we say it's important to use that advanced search to really drill down on the partners that are most likely to um, be a good, um, a good partner for you rather than just casting a, a true wide net and sending everyone a media request. Thank you. Uh, could you clarify again, what level of registration is needed for someone to have access to the partnering system? And what does yes. it mean for exhibitors? Of course, yep. Um, so for business form partnering, you want to make sure that you're um, registering for premier access, not general access. If you're an exhibitor, you can add partnering through um, your portal with Map Your Show. Um, so you want to make sure that you go into Map Your Show and add partnering because um, it is not included um, in your um, exhibit. Thank you. Could you explain how it's possible to connect the partnering calendar to say your iPhone calendar or other calendars. Absolutely. So the, the partnering system will send um, Outlook invitations out automatically um, for meetings in which you're a participant. So if you've added yourself as a participant on a meeting, once that's been scheduled, rescheduled, canceled, um, you'll get those Outlook invitations and, and calendar invitations automatically. They'll go to, the, to Gmail as well and things like that. Um, so make sure that you're accepting them as they're coming in and also just checking your notifications preferences and making sure that that iCal um, toggle is on. Um, it is on um, automatically just by default for everyone, but some people year over year go in and, and make changes to those notifications. So you want to just check that really quickly and make sure that you um, have that enabled. One person heard what you said about uh, the estimated walk times being calculated between meetings. Could you remind us you know, where we find those in the system? Yeah, so how if big you... the convention center is. Of course, yes. So if you have back-to-back -back back meetings on your partnering calendar, it will display right next to it, right on the left-hand side in between the two. And this will only happen for back-to-back -back meetings so that you know um, what your transfer time will be, because that can be tight depending on where you're going for your next meeting. Our algorithm does do a very good job of keeping everything to under about like three minutes or less, um, but sometimes we can't help it if you're meeting with a pavilion that happens to be all the way on the other side of the exhibit hall. So we like to have those indicators in there for you so that you can kind of manage your time wisely. Thank you for that. If people are, you know, if, I, if we heard you correctly, once people are in the system, you want them to keep visiting the system to check on the status of their invites, to accept invites, to adjust their calendar. How would people best see what new uh, people have registered in case they want to send out additional invites? Yes, so like I had demonstrated earlier, when you go into the partnering system search and you click the advanced search button, you scroll down a little bit, you'll find the uh, company registration date filter um, and that'll help you isolate companies that have been added to the system um, within you know, the last day, the last two days, the last week, and you can even apply a custom filter for specific dates. Excellent, thank you. And if we heard you correctly, if you've been in the system before, your profile carries over. You want people to check that the first time they log in. Is it still possible for them to make adjustments after that? Yes, you can make adjustments at any time. Excellent. Uh, people are wondering, does the integration with the calendar apply to Google Calendar too? Yes, you'll get those updates um, sent to your um, sent to your Gmail. So just make sure to accept those. Great, thank you. A couple questions came in uh, for uh, people who may not be at sort of full fledged companies, whether students or people entrepreneurs. You know, at the first part of a startup. So for startups, we do have uh, the startup stadium that is free to apply. 
finalists get a chance to pitch their stories to a group of uh, investor judges for feedback. Uh, we do have for finalist startup stadium, they uh, are granted a, if you make that stage, a discounted registration that includes partnering access. So it would apply to all of the partnering instructions given here. For students, we are looking for a particular student day during the convention. So do visit bio.org slash convention for when we have that uh, student uh, access to be able to see the exhibit floor, to, to see some company presentations, uh, to meet people within the industry. We are eager to make sure that there is you know, a future generation always being supported to help uh, continue the science going on today and to, to be part of the, the, the workforce making the next round of innovations. Any tips on uh, what people should be doing with their profile before uh, the scheduling uh, cycle begins? How should people be sort of, if you're already registered, what should you be doing in April versus May? Mm -hmm. And certainly if you're not registered, you can register now. The partnering system is now open. Yes, um, I would say definitely log in, check out your company profile, make sure that's all updated so anyone that's searching for you can find you easily. Anyone who wants more information on your company can find that information easily. And you really wanna start sending mini requests now um, to just shore up kind of your outreach ahead of time. Um, like I said, once we get to scheduling, you know, the first couple of rounds of scheduling calendars can fill up for sure. Um, so you just wanna make sure you get the bulk of your meeting requests um, short up by then. Um, definitely make sure to update your calendar availability as, um, as, a, a, as reasonably as possible. Um, you can always go back in later and update um, availability and open up more times if you see that no mutual availability indicator on those requests. Thank you. Uh, question came up again. If you already have business forum partnering, do you need to apply separately for exhibit partnering or vice versa? So I guess it depends on what your company is planning on doing. If you're already in the business forum or already participating in business forum partnering and that's what you'd like to do, um, then keep rolling with that. Um, the partnering system, regardless of what type of um, partnering or exhibit or, or business forum you're, you're participating in. It's the same companies, people, it's the same types of meetings that you can get. The only difference between the two is that, you know, if you're in business forum partnering, most of your meetings will be scheduled in the business forum and you have slightly different hours. If you're an exhibitor and you're participating in partnering through your exhibit booth, your meetings will be scheduled in your exhibit, in your exhibit booth at slightly different hours. Thank you for that. One other note within that, uh, some organizations uh, plan out and confirm their uh, exhibit status directly with bio, but some are working with country level organizers, say the, our, our contact in France sort of helps manage the pavilion. If you're planning to exhibit within a country's pavilion, that contact that you're working with would have the details on uh, finalizing your registration and so forth. Uh, but if you're with a company already exhibiting, it's, it, it aligns directly with what Mackenzie just described. Um, I did see a question about explaining the reply only button a bit more. Um, so that is if you want to send a message back to the company without changing the status of the media request. So let's say someone sent you a media request and you're interested, but you're not sure if you want to take the meeting yet. Use the reply only to send them a question or, you know, just following up. And then as you get closer to convention, if you have some requests that you sent that you haven't gotten any um, response, uh, we do see a lot of people send use the reply only button to um, send a follow-up uh, to just kind of ping the other company to see if they're, if they'd accept the meeting. Excellent. A uh, couple questions about testing. You know, this is an evolving uh, situation. We put the latest on the bio.org slash convention site in our health and safety uh, issue. Uh, there will be more details on sort of local testing and timing as we get closer to June. 
uh, so do watch that for the latest information. Certainly anyone already registered for the event will get direct messages about uh, the, the latest health and safety details as they uh, evolve between now and the event itself. Uh, any other tips for first timers in terms of should they be bringing uh, business cards, uh, written literature to the business forum or so forth? Uh, I would say business cards are, are always worthwhile, but that uh, this is a large convention center. You're going to be going to a lot of meetings. That means your other partners are going to be going to a lot of meetings and their preference is for uh, electronic, not uh, other things to put in their uh, flight luggage. So business card probably is a worthy investment, but brochures and so forth, do think carefully about whether you want to uh, physically bring those versus uh, provide electronic versions for, for later follow-up. I believe that's likely a, a better practice and probably a little kinder to the environment. Any other tips you have, Mackenzie, for first uh, time uh, people in our partnering system before we wrap up? Um, no, I think um, I think we're good. Definitely, quality begets quality meetings. You know, so put in put in the work, um, add as much information to your company profile, open up availability. You know. Um, and do outreach throughout the whole process. And if you have any questions at all, my team and I were available. Um, just send us an email, biopartnering at bio.org and be happy to answer any additional questions or give you any tips and tricks. And then our advanced webinar will be on May 11th, which is gonna, we're gonna go really deep in um, to things like the advanced search, notifications, all of that to make sure that you're all set um, before scheduling begins just a few weeks after that. So stay tuned. Indeed, and you could go through those last couple of slides, Mackenzie, as we finish. Uh, we do want you uh, to be able to join us on May 11th to ask more of your questions. Questions in the meantime to the, the bio email address listed there. Uh, this video will be made available uh, very soon, as well as directly to all of you signed up today. Uh, and if you haven't registered, please register. If you have registered, you know, fill out your profile, plan out your calendar, uh, and be ready for a terrific in-person experience with us, with the whole biotech community, with bio in San Diego in June. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Mackenzie, for the detailed exploration uh, you provided and all the work your team did to, to launch this system. Absolutely. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure.